All right, starting with 6.3, subtracting integers. So uh, remember, integers are just positive and negative numbers. That's it. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're just looking at subtraction now. Number lines. Uh, first up, we got the number line. There's going to be one problem like this on the assignment. Uh, you won't necessarily need to understand this with subtraction, but uh, just understand that if you do look at addition and subtraction on number lines, addition would be to the right and subtraction to the left. It's just the, the negatives affect them, affect the direction in really opposite ways. And that, that's where this can become kind of confusing. But uh, for the most part, the number line thing is just a straight, um, uh, it's just a straight sentence. We just apply what we read. So here we go. Begin on the number line at negative 4. First move right 19 units, and then move left 5 units. What is the result? And I'm going to show this a couple of different ways with uh, with a numerical statement. But first, let's go ahead and, and find negative 4 on this number line. Of course, we're going to have to do this by ourselves. But we can put 0 over here because we're moving to the right a big number. But there's 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives. So when it says uh, begin on the number line at negative 4, this is where I would start. And really, uh, even... For this number line on the assignment, all you got to do is uh, state where it ends. All right, so we're starting at negative 4, which I marked there in red, and then uh, it says next first move to the right 19 units or spaces. And so it's a well to get to zero, right? That's one, two, three, four, but I need to get to 19, right? So there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'd be I, I lost count, dang it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So that, that puts us at 15 right there. Uh, but then it says move left 5 units. So from 15, that purple dot, we're going to move to the left 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that ends at 10. So what is the result? 10. And that's all you need to write in the box is just 10. Um... I mean, you know, whether you want to use the number line or not is up to you because technically this is just a addition and subtraction type problem. Uh, it can be written in two different ways. It can be written as negative 4, and then it says move to the right. And remember, to the right is the positive direction. Move to the right, 19. And then move to the left, 5 units. Remember, to the left is subtraction, but there we took away 5 units. So, in fact, I'll put the negative 4 in red to kind of correspond with the colors we put on there. But like I said, there's actually a different way to do this, and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go over this in more detail later. But uh, if we want to change operations, it's almost like we did with uh, division of fractions. You can change operations with addition and subtraction this way. So uh, you, you always start where you start no matter what. So like with this is negative 4, but instead of showing it as addition, it is possible instead to show it as subtract what is then a negative 19. And again, it's not required that you remember or necessarily even understand this yet. We'll get into it in more detail. But then uh, instead of that showing that as minus 5, we can show it as a negative 5. And then that changes that operation into uh, addition as well. So sorry, there's the 19 in purple. Uh, so those two, these two math sentences mean exactly the same thing. It's just saying it in a different way that's all and uh, that that's kind of one of those key uh, ideas with math is if you can learn to write things in different ways sometimes it's more convenient some students would rather see this as plus 19 rather than as ne minus negative 19 or even instead of minus 5 it some prefer to see it as plus a negative 5 it really depends on preference but just to know that you're able to do that gives you some options so uh, this that that's the first thing we're going to look at here is uh, just changing operations. What we'd like to do in, instead of using subtraction is to use always addition, specifically because in the last lesson, you know, there, there's, there's a general good feel about using addition uh, with even not just positives but negatives as well. And we know those rules, right? Like if we're if we're adding two values that have opposite signs, then the bigger number is the sign of the answer. And then you just take the big number and subtract the small number, and then whatever you get from that difference is applied to the sign that we figure out. So uh, we're going to do this the same way, but instead of showing this as subtraction, 
of negatives, we're going to show it as addition of positives. So uh, taking this, uh, this first value, of course, that's the starting point. That's uh, what you start with. But again, if we want to show this as instead of minus negatives as plus positive, then that's good. So uh, one of those, it, it's kind of a gimmick kind of thing. And this works not only with subtraction, but addition as well. But some people prefer to look at this as though it's uh, what, what they call keep change change. I'll, I'll type that in here. Keep change change. I, I mean, the, the thing about keep change change is just it's uh, another rule. But in any case, keep change change, right? So it's a apply keep change change, which means that we're going to keep that first value the same whether it's positive or negative so a it doesn't matter what type of sign it is but change change in, in uh, is being applied to the sign and the operation so uh, that means we would keep the a and a but in, instead of having subtraction we change it into addition and then we have the b there right where it was negative now we would say well now it's a positive so that's what keep change change means and this works on any addition or subtraction problem if you're looking to change the operation like we're going to be looking at uh, in these types of problems. Now, I don't necessarily use keep, change, change, but um, it, it is essentially the same thing. It's not that I don't use it. It's more that I don't really declare it as such. So, uh, But a lot of students prefer it like this, and you know, it, it's, all, it's all a matter of preference. That's all. Now, remember in the last lesson we, we saw something like negative and negative 7 like this um, and then we just pretty much just force that minus negative to be plus like that uh, it's it's pretty much the same thing as this keep change change business but um, without showing a, a second value so we'll, we'll yeah we'll see that in this lesson too so here we go, four problems and yeah like we see we're subtracting negatives just like we saw in that uh, last slide and but now we actually have values to apply. Sometimes we start with negatives. Sometimes we start with positives. Um, and, but in this case, is we're only subtracting negatives, and that's important to notice because uh, whether you apply keep change change or not is really up to you. Um, yeah, it, we'll we'll start with that though. So keep change change right. So I'm going to keep that negative 13 a negative 13. I'm going to change that uh, subtraction into addition. And then I'm going to change the negative 2 into a positive 2. So that, that then becomes negative 13 plus 2. And again, the, the only reason why you may want to do this is because uh, we generally feel better if we see addition of values because, like we saw in the last section, we feel pretty good about that stuff. And then we just apply what we learned last time. And what we see on this one is that uh, they're, they're different signs. Right? We've got a negative and then a positive, negative 13, positive 2. The 13 is bigger than the 2, and it is negative, which makes our answer a negative. So now that we know the sign of the answer, that's all we need to do first, right? Remember, that's our first step. Figure out the sign of the answer and then operate, in this case, specifically because we're adding two different signed values. Uh, we're going to take the bigger of the two numbers, 13, and then we're going to subtract the smaller of the two numbers, 2, 13 minus, the 3 minus 2 is 1, then drop the 1 makes that 11. And then our final answer here is negative 11. Okay, so, so that's keep change change. And again, I, I pretty much apply the same concept. It's just I do it a little differently, uh, which is really what that last slide was saying is if you ever see minus a negative like this, and I, I don't really need to show any extra work on this one other than just to say, well, if I see minus a negative, I just change that into a big plus sign, which we did see last time as well. All right. So, so for me, this becomes negative two plus two, and uh, really, that's that's an opposite added to itself, right? So, I'd say, well, hey, look, we got the negative two. We're adding its opposite, which is two. Um, which, well, that's a zero pair right there. I think we talked about zero pairs last time. So for this one. Right, it, it we do get zero out of this. Some students get a little confused with that, but think about it like this, okay? Because usually by the time we hit college like this, we understand this in terms of money. If you owe someone two bucks, 
but you have two dollars because remember we changed this into plus if you have two dollars then your net worth right now is just zero dollars because everything that's owed is what whatever's in your pocket and uh, so you really have a net worth of zero dollars right there okay a little bit of a financial um, mixture here a little economics I guess but it's, it's really just math 12 minus negative 8 and again whether you prefer keep change change or just change it to a, a big plus sign is really up to you yeah so so we'll do that we'll just alternate between these and so uh, I'll, I'll go keep change change on this one so keep the 12 then change the subtraction into addition but that means we also change the negative into a positive. And this is now a positive plus a positive. And we know how to do those types of problems. Of course, that's just a positive and a positive. That's old-fashioned math, which we've been doing. 12 plus 8, you can stack it if you need to add these two together. 12 plus 8, 2 plus 8 is 10, carry the 1. 1 and 1 is 2. That gives us a positive 20 on that one. All right, so keep change, change. doesn't really matter how you look at this one. Uh, I'm just going to change this into a big plus sign. All right, so that's negative 8 plus 19. And, yeah, while there is showing this final parentheses or the closed parentheses right there, it's not really important because uh, I covered the other one with the plus sign, which is done on purpose, by the way. But now I have a negative plus a positive, And I notice also that the 19 is bigger than the 8. 19 is positive, so I know that my answer is now positive. I'm going to put the sign there, although it's not required to do. Um, and remember what we learned last time, then what you're going to do is take the bigger of the two numbers, which in this case is 19, the smaller of the two numbers, which is 8, and you just subtract them. Okay? And remember, that's a zero pair thing. Uh, these eight negatives are going to zero out eight of these positives, so that's why it ends up being a subtraction problem. 9 minus 8 is 1, and then we'll drop the other one. That's another 11 right there. It seems like we saw another example with an answer 11. I'm not going to show the positive symbol because we don't need it, but 11 is just our final answer on this. So remember, subtraction has addition. We can't change subtraction problems into addition. Whether you believe in keep change, change or not, um, you know, it's up to you. Now, we, we can do straight subtraction, but remember the subtraction that we did before. The second number was always smaller than the first one, right? But now that we're dealing with negatives, in some cases, the second number may be bigger than the first number, and so you may end up with some negative values. Uh, and that's where it may be important to change this into uh, an addition type problem, because if that second number is bigger than the first one, then we have to look at it like it was an addition problem with negatives, which, again, we should feel pretty comfortable with. You don't necessarily have to use the commutative and associative properties of addition, um, but you're welcome to. I mean, you can switch them around if, if that helps you to understand that a little bit better. Uh, but we'll, we'll alternate, okay? So we're, we're going to look at this as though it's keep change change. Uh, uh, the, the main idea here is that we change the operation from negative to a, sorry, a minus into a plus. That's the main thing we're looking for here. So four different problems. That last one's got some big numbers. That shouldn't be a problem for us, though. I mean, it makes it a little bit more work, but uh, it's not more difficult work. So we'll start with negative 2 minus 9. And uh, like I said, what we'd like to do is to change this into addition, right? So keep change, change, because generally that's kind of what students prefer. But we keep the negative 2 what it is. We change the minus into plus, and then the... Uh, uh, we change that second value 9. Now, that, that would be considered a positive 9, but we're going to change it into a negative 9 right here, okay? And what happens is now that we see it as an addition problem, we know that we're adding two values with the same sign, which means the answer will also have the same sign. We just got to take those two values and add them together, 2 and 9, and add those together. 2 plus 9 is 11. So our final answer here is negative 11. Seems like we've seen 11 before, but... Um, and, and just to relate this to money, in, in case we've forgotten from last lesson, but uh, it's like saying you owe $2 and you owe $9. So how much would you owe total? Well, $11. Then the owing would be the negative symbol right there.
or 8 minus 10. And again, this is where we see these are both positives, uh, but we're taking away more than what we have. So this is where it may be useful to see this as a addition problem. So we keep the 8, we change the subtraction into addition, and we change the positive 10 into a negative 10. Keep change, change, right? And so uh, now we can see that we're adding two values, but they're opposite sign values. And remember, if there are different signs, then we take the sign of the number that's biggest. And in this case, it's 10. 10 is negative, which means the answer also will be negative. We just got to take the bigger number, 10, and subtract the smaller one, 8. And then we'll apply the negative uh, to that difference that we find. So zero, uh, 10 minus 8, really, that just gives us 2. So that's our final answer there, negative 2. Or this next one, negative 2 minus 6. Well, um, yep, yeah, I guess keep change, change will work for this one as well. So negative 2, uh, again, we're going to change, keep the negative 2, negative 2, but we're going to change the operation into addition from subtraction to addition. And then we change also the value from positive 6 into negative 6. So negative 2 plus negative 6. Yeah, here's another situation where we're adding now the two values that have the same sign, so uh, that the answer will have the same sign as negative. But then we need to take those two values, 2 and 6, and add them together because they were the same signs. 2 plus 6 is 8, so our final answer here is just negative 8. And this one, yeah, we're, we're dealing with bigger numbers, but it's not too bad. Um, you use keep change change on this. It's negative 40. 166. Keep that. Change the operation from subtraction to addition and also change the sign of the 559 from positive to negative. So negative 466 plus negative 599. And yeah, we're adding two values that have the same sign. Both of these are negative, so we're going to keep the answer negative. And since we're adding a negative to a negative, whatever answer we get is just going to be more negative. Which means we're going to take these two values, 466 and 599, and add them together. So 6 plus 9 is 15, carry the 1. 1 plus 6 is 7, plus 9 is uh, 16, carry that 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 5 is 10. So 1065, but remember we need to apply that negative to it. So it's actually a negative 1065. That's our final answer for this one. So that's the second set of problems, and for the homework, I mean, pretty much every one of the questions is like this. I, I mean, you, you, you'll you start with positives or negatives. That's, that's crucial, but then you either subtract positives like you see in these examples or like you saw in the previous four examples. Uh, sometimes you're going to be subtracting negatives, but, uh, you know, depending on what you start with and how big these values are and what operation you're changing it to, yeah, it, uh, it definitely affects the answer that you'll get. All right, the other type of problem you'll see on the assignment is something like this. We just got to figure out which of the statements are true. If it is, we'll just put a check mark in the box. If it's not, then we won't. Okay. Now, most of these are always statements, meaning that we need to find, if we can find any example that would make these not true, then, um, well, it would make it false. Okay. So... Uh, we'll look at these individually, and if you need to, when you're checking these types of statements, uh, you know, just just plug in some values. Particularly, we're looking at two different values, right? And so it, it may be a good practice. Just to, uh, um, try the first value bigger than the second one, and then if that's true, then you try the second value bigger than the first one based on the condition it gives you, and then it usually will be pretty obvious if it's true or false. But all you need is one false. As soon as you see that one is false, then you don't really, really need to check any others. Uh, if you see that both statements are true, both both tries are true, then um, uh, then then the answer is true. And you put a check mark in the box, okay? So like this first statement, a positive number minus a negative number is always a positive number. Let's find out. Okay, now, now again, this takes some thought. So I'm going to say, hey, take a, um, a positive number minus a negative number. So that's 
uh, some positive numbers, or some positive sign, minus some negative number like this. Okay. Now I'm using blanks here uh, instead of numbers, but again, you could try numbers. Okay, to see if you can find a value that works. So I'm just going to try the first values bigger than the second one. It doesn't matter which values you choose. Um, I'll use 10 and 5. Generally, that tends to help us out. And what happens here is just with this example is you'd, you'd say, well, keep change, change. So then it'd be end up being 10 plus 5, which is 15. Now that's positive. Uh, now, so we get a positive number right there, right? So then we need to check the other way around and say, well, let's go ahead and, and switch those out. Okay, so instead of 10 and 5, let's do 5 and 10. But the 5 is positive and 10 is negative. Uh, now, all this did was it changed the order of the 10 and the 5. And yeah, we know 5 plus 10 is 15 as well. We get the same value both ways, both of which are positive. That's important. That, that's all we were looking for is the sign of the answer. Both of them are positive, so we would know that this is positive. And again, you, there's some deeper thinking that can occur here. Uh, whether you're looking at numbers, these 5 and 10 are relatively close together. If you think, if you thought about this with larger numbers, then uh, it should be even more profound, the, the, the sign of the answers, okay? But yeah, this will be true for any numbers. It doesn't matter how big or small either one is. Uh, when you take a positive number and minus a negative, it's always positive, particularly because you would always change that minus negative into plus. And yeah, if you already start with a positive value and then you're adding another positive value, you'll always end up with a positive value, no matter what. So that checks off that one. And now we need to look at the second one. Subtracting a positive number from a negative number always gives you a negative number. Uh, so, so let's, again, let's just check, <coughs> excuse me, some, some values here. So subtracting a positive number from a negative number, meaning you start with a negative number. And we're subtracting a positive number. So again, I'm not, I'm not showing positive symbol here, but as you know, that's subtracting a positive. Will that equal a negative number always? Let's find out. Okay, now, uh, again, I'm, I'm not going to use an example, but you can if you'd like. So, you know, you could, so you could just say A and B like this, okay? So will this always result in a negative number? Well, Remember, you're starting with a negative value, and then you're subtracting a positive. If you were to change this into a addition problem, right? Keep change, change. So you'd have negative, some negative value, and then plus some other negative value like this. Well, what does that show us? It shows us that you'd be adding two negatives, which makes the answer even more negative. And so, yeah, that would end up being always, always a negative number like it says. So, yeah, that one checks off as well. And then our third statement, zero minus a number is the same as a number minus zero. And this one, this one becomes pretty clear as long as you try different numbers, right? So it's saying zero minus a number. You could use any number like one, right? Well, we get negative one. Is that the same as the number, which was one minus zero? No, that's one. Now be careful because sometimes at this point, because we don't have a lot of experience with negatives, some students would say, well, they are the same. It's one and one. No, that's not true. One's negative, one's positive. Kind of done on different places in the number line, so uh, they're, not, uh, they're not the same. So no, this, is, this one's false right here. And this would be true no matter what value you use. It, uh, I used a positive one. You could use a negative one or uh, uh, any other values and we'd get pretty much just opposites. That's it. So the fourth statement, subtracting two negative numbers always gives you a negative number. Let's find out, okay? So we've got two negative numbers, negative value and a negative value, and it says we're subtracting these two, right? So if we use keep change change, this is the same as saying, well, you'd have a negative value plus positive value like this. Will that always be negative? Nope, it, does. it won't always be negative. I mean, it could be. If that negative value, the first one, is bigger than the second negative value, then, yeah, you'd end up with a negative number. But if the second number here is bigger than the first one, you'd be adding into it, and then it only cancels out so many of the positives, and you'd end up with a positive answer. So this one's false. Okay, and, and I understand we're kind of thinking about these kind of fast. It may take you a little bit more time to process these and then even figure them out, but I, I, I hope this helps you solve those. 
So our fifth statement here, subtracting a minus b, is the same as adding a plus negative b. And yeah, that's true. We've seen that on the previous slide. Remember, that's keep, change, change. Keep the a, change the, the operation to positive that happened, and then the b there is considered positive. It was changed to negative. Keep, change, change. Uh, yeah, that's okay. That one is true. And then the difference of a number and its opposite gives you zero. So uh, think about this. You got uh, any number. I'm going to use uh, kind of do this abstractly. A and then its opposite. Now it's the difference. Difference is subtraction. So if I took a value and subtracted its opposite, then uh, remember just from keep change change, this would end up being a plus a. And that is definitely not zero. It's a be double the a's. Whatever value you chose, it's going to double it. So no, that would definitely not be zero. Now if this was, if you took a number and added its opposite, then yes, that would be zero. But when you're subtracting, no, that, that becomes false.